What are the key skills in Butterfly? Hi everyone, Andrew here, helping you help your swimmers get faster. It's time to talk about Butterfly and Butterfly Upper Body Propulsion. Because swimmers are using both arms at the same time, they can create a ton of propulsion, a huge impulse, and that can lead to a big increase in speed. The drawback is, because they use both arms at the same time, there's going to be a big gap before they can get the arms back into the water and creating propulsion again. So in order to swim effective butterfly, swimmers have to get a lot out of each arm pull because there's that big space between the arm pulls. So if they don't accelerate the body, they don't create a lot of propulsion, they're really going to slow down because it's going to take a lot of time before they can execute another great pull. For that reason, it's really important to lock in a really effective pull and use the most effective skills possible to create a ton of propulsion. We're going to take a look at just how swimmers can do that. And what it really all comes down to is they have to create a big surface area that they can use to move water with. They have to move that water for as long as possible. And they have to accelerate the water as they move through the pole. If swimmers can accomplish those objectives, they can create a lot of propulsion. And that's going to lead to faster butterfly. Let's check it out. So after she enters, she's setting it up. She's oriented the forearms backwards. And now she's going to apply some propulsion to move herself forward. So that's the first key skill is setting things up so that there's a surface area that's facing backwards. So if she was just to push straight down here, rather than orienting the forearm backwards, she's going to create a lot less propulsion, but she sets it up so that the forearms are facing backwards and then she creates a lot of propulsion and then pulls straight back. So again, creating an effective surface area with the arm so that the forearm is oriented backwards is the first key skill that swimmers need to manage. So we'll take a look at another swimmer here, and it's going to be the same thing. So right there, he's orienting the arms, they're facing backwards, and then he's going to rip through and create a lot of propulsion. So first step is setting things up, orienting the arm backwards. You can see that right there, and that's going to create the best opportunity, the best surface area for him to create a lot of propulsion and move a lot of water backwards. So that's the key skill that needs to be executed. Swimmers need to orient those arms backwards early in the stroke. That's going to create a lot of potential to move a lot of water backwards throughout the remainder of the stroke. So we'll take another look with another swimmer here. And as you can see right there, she's setting it up, getting those forearms facing backwards, and then executing a really great pull. And that's going to allow her to create a lot of propulsion. So setting it up, orienting everything backwards, and then creating the pull so that she can move a lot of water when she does pull. If she just kind of pulls right through, it's not going to be very effective. If the forearm's not facing backwards, it's not going to be very effective. So right there, she's setting it up and then ripping it through. So the next key skill is maintaining that position, maintaining that effective surface area for as long as possible. So right about here, she's got things set up. She's facing backwards, and then she's going to pull all the way through the back of the stroke. And you can see that forearm is still oriented backwards as she does so, and that's going to create a big pulse of propulsion. So if she were to set things up right here and then just kind of let go of it, drop the elbow, it's going to be a lot less effective than if she holds that position all the way through the back of the stroke. So sets it up right about here, starts pulling, and then she's going to pull all the way through the back of the stroke, maintaining that forearm position for as long as possible to create as much propulsion as possible. So we'll see the same thing with this athlete. Again, sets it up. He's in position right here, and he's going to pull. Those forearms are facing backwards all the way through the back of the stroke. And you can see from about right here all the way back to the end of it, he's creating a lot of propulsion. He's got those forearms facing backwards. The hands are facing backwards. And that's going to create a big pulse. It's one thing if to get into this position, but he's going to hold that position all the way through the back of the stroke. And that's going to create a huge pulse of propulsion, a lot more than if he maintained that same position for only a short period of time. So it's all the way through, and that's what's going to create a ton of propulsion. One final swimmer here, and you can see big surface area, and then she's going to hold it all the way through. Right here, you can see those forearms are still facing almost entirely backwards and then through the back of the stroke, and then coming back for more. So setting it up, holding it here, and then holding it all the way through the back of the stroke. It's not just the position that can be achieved, it's how long that position can be achieved, and that's ultimately what really creates a lot of propulsion. Third key skill is accelerating the limb through. So patience, 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 and then you can see the acceleration through the back of the stroke. I'm just going through this frame by frame. You can set up, set up, and then there's the acceleration there, that's going to create a lot more propulsion than if swimmers just maintain the same hand speed all the way through. So acceleration through the back there. There's patience here. 
and then there's a setup and then there's a building pressure, a building acceleration throughout the whole stroke. That acceleration maintains pressure on the water. That means more propulsion. Same thing with this swimmer here, patience and then acceleration. Patience and then acceleration. And the challenge for most swimmers is creating the optimal amount of acceleration. If they're too patient, they won't create as much propulsion as they otherwise could. If they're too aggressive, they're going to get ahead of the stroke, and that's going to cause them to lose propulsion too. They're going to lose their timing. They're going to lose their position, and that ultimately will lead to less propulsion. See the same thing with this swimmer. There's the acceleration there. Patience in the front. Acceleration through the back of the stroke. Patience in the front. Acceleration in the back. Again, that allows them to maintain pressure on the water. That allows them to create more propulsion. If they're consistent with the hand speed, even if they execute the right motion, they're not going to get nearly as much propulsion as compared to when they accelerate the limb. Hand acceleration, arm acceleration is a key aspect of creating a lot of propulsion with the upper body. An additional aspect of upper body propulsion that I'd like to draw attention to is how the stroke is powered. So ultimately, swimmers want to use the strong muscles of their chest, the pecs, and the strong muscles of their back, the lats, to create a lot of propulsion. As you can see here, when he sets up the stroke, there's a lot of space in his armpit. It's really open, and the elbow is way out to the side. And then as he pulls, that elbow is going to squeeze into the body, and that's going to be the contraction that powers the pull. And so he's going to open the armpit to set up the stroke right there. The elbows slide out. It creates a lot of space in the armpit. And then the elbows are going to slide into the body. And that motion is going to be powered by the chest and the back. And that's going to create a ton of propulsion. So sets it up, opens the armpit, squeezes through, and closes the armpit. And that allows the strongest muscles of the upper body to power the stroke, which is going to help swimmers create a lot more speed. And because those muscles are so strong, they're going to have a lot more endurance as well. So we'll take a look at the same concept from a different angle. And what we can see is she sets it up. You can see there's a lot of space between the side of her body and her arm. And then as she pulls, that space disappears. She pulls in right there. And that's the action that powers the pull. And that action is powered by the chest and the back. So sets it up. There's a lot of space and then pulls through and closes that space down. And that's going to create the propulsion that she's looking for. And if you notice, there's going to be some inward motion of the hands there. And what that really is is when she pulls back, the elbows come into the side. That's what drives the hand position to move in towards the body too. And so it's not that she's trying to skull. She's still trying to pull directly back. It's because she's closing that armpit, pulling the elbow to the side, that the hands come along for the ride. And so again, she sets it up. And now she's going to pull everything back, squeeze the arms to the body, and that's going to pull her forward through the water. Printing propulsion in butterfly is ultimately simple. Swimmers need to create a big surface area. They need to move that surface area backwards for as long as possible, and they need to do so with accelerating speed. They can power that pull by opening the armpit, getting the strong muscles of the chest and the back lengthened, and then contract those muscles, pulling straight back, letting the elbow come into the side, and that's going to allow for the maintenance of that big surface area, and that's also going to allow for the acceleration of the limb. Hope that was helpful, and as always, keep it simple.